in this video we shall see the current mirror basics now first we shall see what is the need of uh, a current mirror so let us consider uh, three amplifiers so one is cs amplifier 1 so this is uh, an active load cs amplifier with m1 as the active device which is deciding the uh, gm part of your uh, amplifier and m2 is used as the load and here it is uh, again a second CS amplifier so it is similar to this now in this case we have a drain current ID2 the first case it is ID1 so we have a CD amplifier so here the drain current is ID3 now this is a C CG amplifier which is having a different ID that is there are four different uh, amplifiers so all the three have a different uh, drain currents now in order to have different drain currents so all these uh, active loads so in this case m2 in this case it is named as m4 in this case it is m5 so all of them need to have a different bias voltages so it is vb1 vb2 this is vb3 this is vb4 here of course you need to have a different base uh, bias voltage for this now when the drain currents are different okay why the drain currents are different sir different is so maybe because the gains required in the different amplifier is different so we need to have different bias voltages so meaning so we have in an integrated circuit it is possible to have n number of amplifiers each amplifier will be having a different drain current to have a different drain current we need to have a different bias voltages now this is what is uh, we are looking at so we are looking for an integrator circuit having a n number of amplifiers now uh, in order to get different drain currents so we need to have different bias voltages so let us try to see uh, can we have a one reference current i reference now let us assume that this id1 id2 id3 and id4 are depending on your i reference so let us assume that id1 is uh, 20% of I reference, ID2 is 80% of I reference and ID3 is 140% of uh, I reference meaning so I have a reference current so from this reference current using a circuit called as mirror circuit you try to get a uh, required amount of drain current which is ID1, ID2, ID3 so on so this ID1, ID2, ID3 are a fraction or a multiple of the I reference so this we can get a mirror of this current on the other side which is as per your requirement now this is the basic uh, current mirror concept so with a single reference current you can able to get the required uh, currents of required magnitude so let us consider a basic current mirror circuit so here you can see there is a current source having a current of I reference now we have M1 so the drain and the gates are shorted so this is to ensure that M1 always remains in saturation region and let us assume there is uh, one more transistor M2 so whose drain is connected to VDD now so this VDD should be such that this M2 is always in saturation region and uh, one thing to observe here is so M1 is always in saturation so why means so why why this drain and gates are shorted is because whatever expression we are writing over here i reference this is your uh, saturation current expression so this will be valid only when it is in saturation condition so that's why we are keeping this in saturation and uh, in order to because we can see now the gate of this and gate of this are the same potential so vgs of 1 is equal to vgs of 2 so if this has to get a current of uh, uh, a fraction or same as equal to I reference so this should also be in saturation so let us keep this in saturation so that uh, a required amount of I copy happens on the M2 side so this is also connected to VDD now let us find out okay what is this uh, I reference that is current flowing through this MOSFET so we know that this is a NMOS transistor it is ID expression is given by so mu n c ox by 2 w by l of m1 into vgs minus vth whole square so this is vgs1 of this MOSFET since uh, we named this vgs1 as vx so I am writing the expression for the 
same IR reference uh, by replacing this VGS1 by VX. So we can actually estimate what is the voltage VX depending on what is the required drain current or uh, the current that is flowing and uh, what is the dimensions of this M1 transistor. Since the VGS2 that is uh, gate to source voltage of M2 is same as gate to source voltage of M1. So we can write the current through this M2 as equal to mu and C ox W bell of second transistor multiplied by Vx minus Vgs. Because we know that Vgs1 equal to Vgs2 which is equal to Vx. I can write the expression as so mu and C ox W bell of 2 into Vgs minus Vth whole square. Now just dividing the equation 2 by 1. So this is equation 2 where we have this and the equation 1 is the current through the M1 transistor. It is given by this. Have a look at uh, uh, the parameters on the right hand side. All the parameters except W by L of uh, second and 1. So all other parameters are same. So now we can see you can cancel out this with this new uh, VGS1 and V is equal to VGS2. So that's why it is VX VX. Now we can see now I copy by I reference is equal to W by L of 2 by W by L of 1. Mean to say I copy so you can get the required amount of current on M2 depending on the W by L of the two transistors. Now from this expression from this expression it is very clear that you can copy the current onto M2 or depending on the W bell of the two transistors. So I copy is equal to I reference multiplied by W bell of second transistor divided by W by L of first transistor. So it is true for uh, both the, the, the whatever analysis we did is true for this uh, PMOS circuit also. So we have a PMOS circuit now it's a, here also it is drain and gates are shorted. So this is our uh, I reference. So I copy is again given by so W bell of uh, 2 divided by W bell of 1 multiplied by I reference. Suppose if I want to have 1.3 times of I reference. So here if I copy is equal to 1.3 times I reference then so this is 1.3 times I reference this is I reference. Now as you can see here W bell of 2 should be equal to 1.3 times the W bell of 1. So if we size this MOSFET 1.3 times compared to the M1, we certainly get the current that is coming over here as 1.3 times of this. So here like we are having a mirror, so whose uh, magnet will be slightly increased. If you want to have a slightly uh, lesser value, we can make the dimension of this lesser compared to M1. Now let us consider three amplifiers. So this is one CS amplifier. So this is also a CS amplifier with uh, uh, different current. Now this is uh, a CG amplifier with uh, bias voltage as VB3 here. Now let us assume that I want to have uh, the first ID happens to be 0.4 milliampere. This is 0.7. This is 1.2. So here we need to have 0.4 milliamperes. This is 0.7 required here it is 1.2. So for that, so let us have a, a source so I reference which is of 1 milliampere. Now we can say this is the current meter circuit. So we have a current meter circuit here. Now this is so what we discussed in the previous case. So this is the basic uh, current meter circuit and this is a part of some other circuit. Now this will be a part of the other circuit. Now we are having uh, this circuit being replaced here. You can see now in the next circuit we have similar to this. Now this M reference is a reference transistor which will which is allowing a current of I reference. I reference. Now this is carrying a current of 1 milliampere. Now on this side so on this uh, amplifier 1 we are supposed to have a current of uh, 0 0.4 milliamperes. Now this uh, W by L of uh, 2 should be 0 0.2 times that of the W bell of uh, M reference. Now you can see the Vx of this transistor and these transistors are same. Now we have the second MOSFET, the second amplifier which is M4 here. So this Vb2 is again taken from the same Vx you can see. Now it is same Vx. Now the current that is flowing through this M4 and M3 should be equal to 0 0.7 milliamperes. Now we need to size this accordingly so that uh, 
this 1 milliampere will going to mirror like a 0.7 milliampere meaning that the dimension of this should be uh, meaning uh, if 70% uh, this is 0.7 70% of the current has to flow through uh, M4 and M3 so with respect to this then the dimension of M4 should be 70% of that of M reference similarly this you can see this is again uh, the VP3 that is required so VP3 is equal to Vx but how do we get a current uh, 1.2 times that of uh, the 1 milliampere here so we should make the dimension of this 1.2 times compared to the M reference so that's what we are having in the next slide uh, as I reference is equal to 1 milliampere in order to get a current of 0.4 milliamperes the W well of 2 should be equal to 0.4 times that of W well of reference meaning the W well of 2 so this should be this W well of 2 should be uh, 0.4 times the W well of M reference so in order to get a current of uh, 0.7 milliamperes on the second amplifier so a W well of 4 should be equal to 0.7 times of the M reference so W bell of M reference so you can see now this the M4 the W bell of fourth transistor should be 0 0.7 times that of uh, this uh, M reference similarly uh, the MOSFET should have a dimension 1.2 times compared to the M reference that's what is there here meaning if W bell of uh, M reference is uh, 100 so this should be 40 this should be 70 this should be 120 so that's what is 0 0.4, 0 0.7 and 1.2. So this way we can able to get the required current flowing through without bothering about what is the reference voltage required. So in the earlier case you are supposed to exactly adjust the bias voltage so that the desired current flows. Now if you have a mirror, a single reference current, using the current mirror you can replicate that current to a number of amplifiers. We shall see one more example where we are having uh, this is CS amplifier, there is a CD amplifier, there is again a CS amplifier with the PMOS as active load. Now one thing to observe here is, so here PMOS is getting the uh, uh, required bias voltage, here NMOS is getting the required bias voltage, here also it is NMOS which is getting the required bias voltage. So using this uh, PMOS mirror, so this is one reference voltage, so which will be usually connected to the PMOS. You can see now you have a PMOS uh, uh, circuit here. So this is a PMOS uh, circuit which requires the bias voltage. Now that is directly going here. So what is the need of uh, this M2 reference and M3 reference? So because we have two more NMOS circuit which require the bias voltage, for that we cannot get the voltage from this and connect it to uh, this. Uh, we, we cannot have this VX connected to this. So we should have uh, two more, uh, one more VX, if, if you name it as VX1, so this VX1 is used for the uh, PMOS, there is one more VX2 which is used for the NMOS bias voltages. Now what we have here is, so this 1 milliampere is reflecting over here, now we will we'll ensure that this 1 milliampere flows here also, so that can be made possible by making the dimension of M reference 1, M reference 2 and M reference 3 same. So all the three have same uh, W well ratios. So that's what I've written here. So W well of uh, M reference one, reference two, reference three are hundred. Now here we need to have a current of 1.4 times. So here that is between uh, through M2 and M M1 and M2, it should be 1.4 milliamps. You make the dimension of uh, this, that is uh, this transistor, that is M2, 1.4 times. That is, you can see now it is 140. Similarly, if you want to do it for now, what is the current that is required over here in the second CD amplifier? It is 0 0.5 milliampere, which is 50% of 1 milliampere. So make this M3. So this is your M3, 50%. Now you can see M3 is here. So M3 is 0.5 times the W well of reference, which is uh, 0 0.5 to 100, which is 50. Similarly, this M5 should have a current of 0.7. So this should have so 0.7 times 100 which is 70 is the W well ratio of this. Now we have one more uh, mirror circuit here to give the required bias voltage for the NMOS. So this will going to give the required bias voltage for the PMOS. So this way we can able to get the required bias voltages for both uh, PMOS as well as NMOS from the current mirror circuit so that 
the required amount of current flows by changing the dimension of that MOSFET which is